Hey, it's Dave here, and welcome to another video on irritable bowel syndrome. And rather than focus on the problems, we're going to talk about some potential solutions in this video, uh, starting with dietary adjustments and amendments that you can make um, to see if you can bring down irritable bowel symptoms. Now, as I've said in previous videos, the cause of irritable bowel syndrome is going to be different from one person to the next to the next. So these are just ideas. I don't know in your individual case what the underlying reason for your irritable bowel syndrome might be. I don't know why you're bloated or constipated or why you have abdominal pain, diarrhea, uh, belching, gas and all of these different things. Um, as I've said also, it's not always purely related to food. You could have a lot of bad bugs overgrowing in your digestive system, SIBO, candida, uh, parasites and things like that as well. So we need to just be clear that this is not going to be the 100% perfect answer for everybody. But it's free. You don't have to do any fancy testing. You can just start to eliminate some of these foods and see if you feel a little bit better. And we'll talk about what to do if you don't feel better at the end of the video. So the first foods that we typically get our clients to avoid or minimize are foods that contain gluten. Gluten can be very, very irritating to the small intestine and it can mimic, gluten intolerance can mimic all the symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome. And now and again, you'll have somebody go on a gluten-free diet and they won't have irritable bowel syndrome anymore. The same goes for cow's milk. Some people eliminate gluten and they don't feel any different, but when they get rid of cow's milk from the diet, boom, all the symptoms improve. Next one, soy. Soy is actually my nemesis food. I don't do well on soy at all. I do quite well on gluten. I don't do too badly on cow's milk, but soy for me is a major, major problem. I always have digestive problems when I consume any form of soy, whether that's soy beans, soy milk, tofu, soy protein powder, you name it, and even you know a lot of the soy additives that are in processed foods. Related, but not exactly the same, are nuts and seeds. And nuts and seeds actually contain a lot of substances that can also be very irritating to the digestive tract. Um, things like lectins and oxalates, for example, are quite high in nuts and seeds. And so I recommend just to start with, just get rid of nuts and seeds from your diet and see if your digestive system starts to work better. It doesn't mean you have to avoid nuts and seeds forever necessarily, but just as a starting point, see if that helps. And then finally, vegetable oils. Processed vegetable oils, margarines, vegetable fats, um, oils that are in big golden bottles on the supermarket shelves, sunflower oil, safflower oil, soybean oil, canola oil, corn oil, etc. They are often uh, very irritating to the digestive system as well, and they're not great um, you know, in terms of general health for, for various reasons, which we cover in uh, other videos. So that would be the starting point. They would be like the big players that if you were to um, if you were to get a thousand people with irritable bowel syndrome and have a guess at which foods would be the most problematic for people, they would be the ones that I would usually start with. And it basically comes from working with people in this area for 10, 11 years and seeing the results that we get when people take these foods out of their diet. Now, what would phase two be? Well, phase two becomes a little bit more complicated. Um, phase two involves foods that are high in what we call FODMAPs. These are kind of fibers, polysaccharides, that microbes love to eat as food as well. And when those microbes uh, act out or, or uh, play with these FODMAPs, they create fermentation. And fermentation produces a lot of gas. And the gas is very irritating to the system. So you get bloated, you start to belch, you might get heartburn. And depending on what gas is being produced, which is based on what microbes are overgrowing, you can end up with constipation and diarrhea as a result of that as well. So a low FODMAP diet is often promoted as part of a naturopathic um, approach to irritable bowel syndrome. Um, there's a lot of different foods 
in the FODMAPs list, so I'm not gonna mention them here, but you can either watch uh, other videos or, or go online and have a look at some of the uh, options that you have available to you on a low FODMAP diet. Then we have lectins. We've already talked about lectins in the context of soy, nuts, and seeds. Lectins are a component of beans, legumes, grains, seeds, nuts, and things like that. They are in other foods as well, but it's those kinds of beans, legumes, nuts, and things that they tend to be highest in, and they can cause a lot of irritation in the digestive system as well for some people, not everybody. Oxalates, uh, salicylates, they are in um, a lot of different foods as well, even some of the so-called healthy, healthy foods like spinach, um, green vegetables, fruits, and things like that. And again, it gets a bit complex because you don't wanna be avoiding everything. You need something that you can continue to eat. And so by the time you get down to sort of the lectins, oxalates, and salicylates, I recommend you're working with somebody who really understands this so that they can make sure they create an eating plan for you that doesn't just have you avoiding everything, where you've actually still got some really nice tasty foods to eat in amongst all of this uh, avoidance and minimization. Um, so stage one, gluten, cow's milk, soy, vegetable oils, etc. Stage two, a little bit more complex. Definitely recommend you hire somebody to work with to work through all of this. And then phase three, if you really want to nail down individually some of the foods that might be triggering an immune response, then you can look at doing some food allergy testing. Food allergy testing is a topic that we've covered in other videos. And the reason is it, you know, food allergy testing is not all created equal. There are different ways to test food allergies, and that's because there are many different ways the body can react against food. There are different components of the immune system that need individual and different tests. There are also the reactions to lectins, oxalates, salicylates, etc. All of this needs to be um, considered when we're talking about how the body can respond against different foods. I like to use a finger prick test where you drop a couple of drips of blood on a card and that tests for what we call IgG food reactions. And that's a nice starting point. It doesn't cover everything, but it tells you whether you're reacting against uh, any of 90 different foods. And it's kind of cool because it also gives you um, a measurement of whether your immune system is reacting against candida as well. So it looks at all the main players. It looks at whether you're reacting to cow's milk, soy, different fruits and vegetables, meats, um, fish, seafood, um, yeast, and all of these different things. And sometimes when people find that they're allergic uh, and they have these IgG responses to food and they avoid those foods, their life changes almost overnight. It can be a really dramatic effect. But like I said right at the start, these foods are not everything. You can have IBS for other reasons. And so if you're changing and chopping these foods around, you're avoiding them and you don't feel any difference, any changes whatsoever, then I strongly recommend that you start to look at the microbiome. Do you have too many bad bugs, bacteria, parasites, yeast and fungi? Uh, has your digestive function just tanked? Are you just not digesting food because you're not making enough stomach acid? Your pancreatic enzyme level is low. Your liver and gallbladder are not working properly. Is there some psychological, mental, emotional stress that's creating an imbalance in your digestive system that's contributing to the problems? So anyway, you can start with this because it's fairly simple to do and it's free of charge. It doesn't cost you anything to start to play around with avoiding some of these main foods. Okay, so please go ahead and, and, and play with that. If you need some help, there's links beneath the video window on how you can get in touch, how you can book a consultation so that we can do a case review, and also some links on um, other videos and resources related to how we do all of these tests that I talk about on the videos as well. So I hope this has been helpful and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you.